Good morning and welcome. Here we are beginning a, another week of these daily devotionals. We've been doing them for nearly eight months now since the initial lockdown. And, you know, it's like a lot of times life uh, presents some unexpected consequences and they're not always bad. Sometimes they are really good, uh, even though we know that the lockdown and the restrictions have had a tremendous impact upon many people in a very negative way. On the other hand, I've seen people kind of take make lemonade out of lemons, if you will, uh, because it's really really has enabled us to really kind of have this kind of conversation. And for many of you, it's meant developing kind of a, a regular devotional system where every day uh, we have this conversation and hopefully I can direct you in some ways that will help you to grow and mature and be strengthened in your walk with God. Uh, for those of you who might be interested, you can go all the way back. Um, I mean, early on, I did a series of messages one week where I just talked about how do you start reading and studying the Bible in a systematic way. And I think that's really something very important for us to understand that a lot of people have what a friend of mine referred to as an island theology. They they read a book here, they read a book there, they get a truth here, they get a concept or a principle, but they don't have a, the overview. They don't have that Genesis to Revelation holistically biblical theology where they understand the whole plan of God. And I think that's key to being able to know how to effectively uh, navigate the circumstances we, we come into. All the time I'll have people come up to me and say, well, you do you have a verse that you can that will help me with this particular situation? And I usually kind of, as I do very sardonically sometimes, say, well, yeah, uh, it's found someplace between Genesis and Revelation. Uh, I like to say to people, you need to understand that you need to read it before you need it. And one of the things I've experienced a lot is as I am daily reading through the Word of God, God will point out or bring my attention to a particular passage that I may not understand why it's really ministering to me at that moment, but later on that day or week, it begins to come to life and I begin to live out that passage in a very real way. Uh, it's one of those kind of things where we not only uh, read it and know it, but we begin to try it and prove it and we begin to find that the Word of God is dependable and reliable. And so that's why we do this every day and, and I hope that you're uh, following along on a regular basis. Uh, we've been studying through the, or looking at the seven churches of Revelation. We started by talking about the church of Ephesus, which I've defined as being cold. If you'll know, I have kind of a, uh, a systematic alliteration. I use a C word to describe each of these churches and where they're at in God's eyes. And the first one being cold was a church that had lost its first love. And essentially they had become very religious, but not their relationship with God and probably with other people had begun to wane. Uh, they became what I like to refer to as the religious finger pointers. They're really good at pointing out where somebody else is messing up and not doing right, but they don't do a real good job of looking at their own self and seeing how the truth of God should apply and the conviction of God should be working in their life. And so the second church that we're looking at, where we left off last weekend, last Friday, was the uh, the church of Smyrna. And the word Smyrna, literally the name means to be crushed. And it's the idea that this is a church who was under intense persecution. In fact, look at some of the words that he uses, the adjectives he used to describe their circumstances. He says, I know your afflictions. I know your poverty. He says, I know the slander of those who claim they are Jews and are not. He says, uh, do not be afraid to suffer. And he talks about, you will suffer persecution. And then finally says, be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. I mean, you couldn't come up with six more <laughs> intimidating words to put into somebody's life and saying, this is how your future is going to look. And this is what I'm going to describe to you. And I think in a way it, it has some, some even more important uh, implications to us because, well, tomorrow is election day and uh, we'll be deciding who's going to be the next president. Um, no matter how that turns out, it doesn't look to be pretty. Uh, I personally think that one consequence would be uh, worse than the other. But the simple fact is that God is trying to do a work in the lives of his people because judgment, he said in his word, begins with the church of God, begins with the family of God. That before the church can be salt and light in our world, God has to really do a refining work in us. And many of us, instead of being salt and light, we're just more like spit and vinegar. And uh, we, we could tell everybody what's wrong with them like the Ephesians would have done, but we don't understand the sweetness that comes from being crushed. You know, the Israel 
Israelites understood that value of crushing something. They, they had to crush the grain in order to be able to make bread out of it. They had to crush the grapes in order to make wine. They had to crush the olives in order to get olive oil. These things were actually their three staples that every diet was built around those. They didn't eat a lot of meat. And so it's these three things that were only made digestible and could only bring them nourishment if they were crushed. And so one of the things I think we need to understand is that there are going to be crushing experiences in your life and in my life. And none of us looks forward to it and none of us readily embrace them. But at the same time, we come to understand what Paul related in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, where he said, I've learned that in my weakness, I become strong. And therefore, he said, as a consequence, I delight in that weakness. And so every one of us is kind of, you know, we're, we struggle with some kind of weakness. We all have weaknesses. We all, I often say, we're all snake bit by our parents and, and the toxin of sin has, is run through our system and manifests itself in some really unhealthy ways. And part of the spiritual life is overcoming those things that hinder the working of God in our life. Well, I would just like to say that if you're going through crushing right now, you're going through a breaking experience, my heart goes out to you and I don't want to make light of it. I don't want to pretend like it's easy because it's never easy. It's never been easy for me and I've always battled it when I've had to go through it and I expect that I'll have many more of those seasons as well. But the simple fact is that this is what God uses to bring the sweetness, the real nourishment spiritually that we ourselves are nourished by, but also crafts us into people who can be the nourishers of others. So. Let's, we'll stop here, but it's been just really an important thing, I think, to focus on. I've, I'd like you to just really take a moment as we close and have you just sit back and say, okay, what is, what is the most crushing thing that I'm dealing with right now, the thing that's really kind of taking the wind out of my sails? And to really begin to thank God. God, I thank you for this experience in my life because it's working a, a profound difference. So think about that, pray about that, and um, I think that you'll find that God by His Spirit will give you some tremendous insights. So again, thank you again. It's a, always a pleasure to be able to spend a few moments with you each morning, and uh, I'm looking forward to tomorrow, Election Day. God have mercy on our souls. Take care.